Hey everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and today I'm going to be talking about some more of the books that I read in 2018. Like I said earlier, I've read a lot of books in 2018. I get behind on filming because college life, so I bulk film. So hopefully, um, these videos will not go all the way into the whole consecutive year of 2019, but I'm talking about books, so regardless of when I've read them or not, they're books. Um, so the first book that I'm going to mention is the Bible. Yes, I completely read the entirety of the Bible in 2018. I'm in my second reread now. That's all I'm going to say. Also, this is my edition. Look at how pretty it is. Look, I, I love it. It's, it's so cute. Anyway, so yeah, I gave it five stars. I am continuing to reread it every day. Right now I'm in Exodus. Um, yeah. Because I've reread the whole entirety of the Old Testament, New Testament, now I'm back in the Old Testament. Okay. Next, I'm going to put this, I don't know where to put it. I'm going to put that right there. Okay. The next book that I read is an audiobook, but my sister owns a copy, so I'm going to hold up her copy to show you. Is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jimmy Hahn, which is like one of the most talked about books and movie adaptations of 2018. Um, audiobook for this is so adorable. Uh, the lady who does the narration for Laura Jean, love her. Like, if I had read this, I probably would have given it, like, maybe a two, maybe a three. It's somewhere in that consecutive range. Um, but the audio was just so good, you guys, and I just really, really loved it. So, um, you probably know what this is about, but if you don't, I'll tell you briefly. This follows Laura Jean, who is half, um, half white, half Korean, right? Yes? I think so. Gosh, here I am giving wrong information. I hope I'm right. It's been a hot second, but I'm pretty sure she's half Korean. Um, and she has to tackle all kind of things in her teenage world, but she's also a hopeless romantic, and she has written a love letter to every boy that she has ever loved before. And one day those letters get mailed out, and she finds herself in a conundrum because one of those letters belongs to her sister's now ex-boyfriend and the most popular boy in school. And she has to divert her sister's ex-boyfriend, who she should not love, by um, pretending to be in a relationship with Peter Kavinsky. And so a fake relationship with Peter Kavinsky starts because he's trying to get over his vicious girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, on again, off again, Genevieve, and, yeah, high school drama ensues, it's fun, you guys, it's cute, I have a full-length review for this, so I'll leave a link down below, I just, I gave it 3.5 stars, you guys, I don't rate contemporary, usually above a 3, unless it's, like, hard-hitting contemporary, but I just really, really enjoyed the dynamics of the song, family, well, the Covey song family, and I just really loved the relationships, and I, I loved it, and the movie's great, too, like, Peter Kavinsky and the movie, mm -hmm. the movie kind of fixes a lot of issues I had, but also, this is a really great novel, if you're not a contemporary fan, take it from someone who isn't a huge contemporary fan, it's worth giving a shot to, so yeah, I recommend it. And then the next book that I read is, well, I DNF'd it. I listened to an audiobook, and it's the only book I've ever DNF'd. It's called The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knoll. We follow the perspectives of, I think, three women who are on a famous reality TV show about working women. And we know that one of them has died from the beginning, and so we're kind of going through it and trying to figure out um, why this person died. One of the one of the girls we follow is the one who died, so we're like trying to like figure out what's going on. I absolutely could not stand the narrator. I did not like the characters. This is a thriller, but it reads a lot like. Um, well, it's marketed as a thriller, but if I remember correctly, I've heard from people that it's not, and you shouldn't go into it as that, because it's more like trashy TV drama. But this is also, like, heaped with politics and feminism, which I'm here for, but not 
to the point where I want to get hit over the head with it, and not to the point where I'm like, wait, what am I even listening to? What's going on? Because, like, I'm, I'm here for your, like, politics, like, thanks for, like, your TED Talk, but what's the story? Am I supposed to like you? Because your, your politics are interesting, but your actions do not follow those politics. So, like, can we get on a better level and stop being such crappy human beings which is a horrible thing to ask because obviously if they were not crappy human beings we would not be having this novel which is the whole point trashy tv drama and a novel um yeah so i dnf'd it i gave it like two stars i dnf'd it at 15 percent but you guys though that like i think i read like i listened to a large chunk but like that 15 percent felt like four hours of narration and I was like I listened to it on a 1.75 speed and I was still like this is boring me so yeah don't recommend the favorite sister at least for my own personal preferences maybe I would have liked it more if I had read it instead of tried to listen to it but I don't want to go back and read it because I just I'm over it so it's gonna stay a DNF for me the next book I read is an arc that I got from Met Galley and this blew me away. So I'm going to tell you this story the same way that I told it, and then I'm going to shock you. So picture this. There's a young girl named Sally Horner, and she lives in 1948 Camden, New Jersey, and she just really wants to fit in. She just wants people to love her. She wants to belong. And these girls that she idolizes, who are kind of like the in-girls, tell her, well, if you steal this from this department store, you can be a part of our group. And so she steals, and this man walks up to her, and he goes, I know what you're doing. And he claims to be an FBI agent. His name is Frank LaSalle. Um, and so a manipulation and power struggle ensues where Sally is in complete fear. She's a very innocent, naive girl. And she believes that this man is an FBI agent. And when he manipulates Sally's own mother into believing that he is the father of a schoolmate, um, he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to Atlantic City. And eventually, the mother realizes, oh my god, my daughter has been in Atlantic City for way too long, and I'm confused. Well, we follow Sally as she is under the manipulation of a very sick man. We encounter all kinds of people that she... Um, meets along the way, including people in a trailer park who offer friendship, um, a nun who suspects that she is living in an abusive environment, and um, a circus, a freak, freak show, that's what it was called back then, um, of people with deformities and disabilities who are, you know, watched at for the fun of everyone. She makes friends, if I remember correctly, with a bearded lady. So, this story is a fictionalized account of a real-life crime. Sally Horner did exist. In fact, she was the inspiration for Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. And it is a real story. And I'm telling you this because if you do pick this up, um, not all of it is real, but mo it's fictionalized. Um, I want you to know that the tragedy that happens at the ending is not for chops, like I did. I, like, turned that page and I was like, how dare they, like, just make the worst thing happen to this already incredibly broken young girl who gets to, like, be free. Um, I am trying to, like, tiptoe around spoilers, but, like, it's nonfiction, so you can look her up and obviously find out what happened to her. But it's not false. Like, she really did get free and then the most horrific thing happened to her. And it's incredibly heartbreaking. So, yeah, I gave this five stars. I love this novel. It's beautifully written. It's horrible. Obviously, keep in mind, she's kidnapped, so there is rape. There is um, pedophilia. And it's horrible. It's uh, twisted. But it's one of the most beautiful historical fiction novels I've ever read. And Rust and Stardust is fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. I'm actually planning on picking up uh, The Real Lolita, which is a nonfiction account of her case, um, and The Life of Sally Horner, which I'm really interested in getting to. But yeah, Rust and Stardust, man. So yeah, those are the books that I read in 2018. Um, if you're not a fan of the Bible, don't read it. But if you are, that's like my favorite. But Rust and Stardust, man. Rust and Stardust.
it's the one that I recommend the most. Like, it's one of the best reads that I read in 2018. It blew me away. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. Let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these books, if you've seen To All the Boys I Love Before movie. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, and happy reading!